Hey there everybody, I'm going to show you today how to make your own dehydrated camping meals. I'm going to be showing you today how to make my dehydrated spaghetti with beef. Now it's pretty simple, you just make normal spaghetti for the most part, but there are a few little steps in there that make it a little bit different, make it easier for de dehydrating. Um, if you don't want to make it with beef, you can skip any part that has to do with the beef. You can make it vegetarian the same way, it'll pretty much taste the same way. Now right now I'm going to show you how I make my spaghetti for camping. Um, if you want your own recipe, just follow the steps as far as cutting things up and the meat goes. Other than that, make your own recipe, make it however you want, and you can skip how I'm cooking mine for the most part. But I will show you how I make my exact cooking or camping meals, and let's get into it. All right, what you're going to need for ingredients is two pounds of lean ground beef. Yes, you need lean, and I'll get into that later. One green pepper, one red pepper, one medium to small white onion. One package of mushrooms, I use baby bella mushrooms. Three pounds of spaghetti noodles. And then you're gonna need four Hunt's traditional pasta sauce, that's just what I use. Minced garlic or garlic powder, oregano, leaf basil, black pepper, ground cayenne pepper, salt, and dark brown sugar. Okay, we're gonna start with browning our beef. We're gonna put it up to medium high, get our meat in the pan. So the reason you're going to use lean ground beef is because fat is what makes um, your dehydrated meals go rancid. So when the beef's all done, you're going to want to rinse it off. You're going to put it in a strainer and rinse off all the fat you can. So it's better to start with lean ground beef. So what we're going to do is we're just going to get this browned up, dicing it as small as possible. Make sure you get in a little bit so it dehydrates better. And other than that, just brown this up and we're gonna get cutting up and starting our sauce. Okay, we're gonna start with cutting up our onion. Now, um, you want to cut your veggies into smaller spots, smaller bits, just like, just like uh, dicing up the beef when you're browning it, just so it dehydrates everything better and it's kinda just, just easier to dehydrate. And that's that's a perfectly fine size nice and small okay we're gonna start adding stuff for the sauce we are going to turn the heat up to medium high add a touch of olive oil in there just so it doesn't burn when we're doing this but I like to heat up my uh, peppers and onions a little bit before the sauce starts add our onions in there making sure to keep an eye on our beef dicing up as small as possible. We're going to cut up our two peppers in about the same size as our white onion. Onions a little stir. Add in our red peppers, and then we gotta cut our green peppers. Okay, we're gonna add our green peppers in there. We're just going to kind of let this heat up for just a second. The onions have already been heating up a little bit. Now we've got to get the green peppers. Just letting them heat up just a little bit. Helps release the flavors to here. Make sure to keep our beef chopping it up nice and fine as best we can as it browns. Because if you get any big chunks of meat, it just, it just might not dehydrate as well as if it's all tiny little bits. You want to help it so that it doesn't spoil or anything. Got to be safe. Especially if you're going to rely on this food and you're going on an extended trip. Okay, our green peppers and our onions and our red peppers have heated up just a little bit. So now we're going to start making our sauce. So we're going to start adding in the sauce to start. These are 24 ounce cans and I'm going to use four of them. Right, 
let's stir that up a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to start adding in our spices as this beef continues to get brown. It's almost done here. We're almost done with our beef. Now, I'm sorry guys, I don't ever measure anything, so I'm just going to show you kind of what I throw in there, and I'm, I'm really sorry about this, but I don't measure anything. So this is some cayenne. I add about that much. I like, my, I like a little spice when I'm out there. Good chunk of basil. I like basil. I like it really basilly. So that's a good chunk of basil. Black pepper. Always like black pepper. Good chunk of black pepper. Nice bit of oregano. So overall I'd say about two tablespoons of oregano, or a tablespoon of oregano, two tablespoons of black pepper, two tablespoons of basil, about almost a tablespoon of cayenne, and then some minced garlic, and I'm using minced garlic, the dried minced garlic, not the uh, jarred. I like it extra garlic, so we're going to add a whole bunch of that. Just in case it's, it can get rancid, you know. A little extra salt in there. That's not too much salt. I would say that's like a teaspoon of salt or less. And then some brown sugar, just to sweeten it up. I like a nice flavorful pasta when I'm out in the woods camping. A couple tablespoons, about two tablespoons of everything besides cayenne and salt will get you get you pretty good. So let's stir that in there. And see so yeah, when I'm cooking I always taste my flavors and then you know as this heats up when this gets simmering I'm going to uh, taste it and if it needs more or something I'll add it but that should do pretty good for now. So we're going to heat this up a little bit and our beef is almost done cooking. So now we're going to bring this up to a simmer, finish up our beef and we're going to cut up some mushrooms and add some mushrooms in here. Now when I cut up when I cut up mushrooms there's no rhythm, there's no rhyme. I just kind of for this meal, I'm not putting them into little nice slices. I'm just going to kind of chunk them up into dice little bits just to have mushrooms and the flavor in my spaghetti. We're not getting fancy. We're just going to get this in a little bits. Little bits, that's what we're shooting for. Nice little pieces of mushroom. All right, go ahead, add in our mushrooms. Oh yeah, lots of mushrooms. Mm -mm -mm. Stir that in there. Oh, this is gonna be so good. Okay, our our beef is about all browned up. So now, let's get to rinsing this off and get it put in the pot so everything can simmer. So we're gonna get a strainer out and you wanna get your water piping hot so it helps to get the grease off. But we are gonna literally rinse our beef. Get off all the fat, rinse it real good. This is a very important step if you're going to add meat to your spaghetti. You do not want that fat in there because that will make it spoil. This may get rid of some of the nutrients and protein maybe. I'm not really sure on that, but it's definitely uh, necessary to get the beef in there. You pretty much are going to do it until you're not seeing fat drip through in the water. And I'm, I'm not seeing anything but clear water now. So, that's good. Now we're gonna let the water drip out just for just a second and add it to our pan. Okay, adding in our beef. There we go. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to get this whole sauce, this whole pot of sauce to a simmer 
and I let mine simmer for at least an hour, an hour minimum. Gets all the flavors out, releases all the flavor of all the veggies and everything. And you can see it's a pretty thick sauce right now, but I guarantee you it's going to get a little bit liquidier as uh, the moisture from the peppers and stuff comes out as it simmers. So get it up to a simmer and let it simmer for an hour. Oh yeah, simmering good. All right, I'm gonna do a quick flavor check to see if it is delicious or not. Mmm. Oh yeah, we don't need anything else, it's perfect. Okay, so our sauce has been simmering for an hour. It is smelling delicious, looking delicious, and it is about done. I'm gonna put the heat down a little bit and we're gonna start cooking up our noodles. So we're gonna bring this up to a rolling boil, put all three pounds of noodles in here. Okay, our water's at, ooh, frisky. All right, our water's at a rolling boil. So what I like to do is uh, break up my noodles into kind of thirds so that it, it uh, helps with the uh, last step of soaking in all the sauce. So I just break them up a bit. You can leave them long if you'd like and cut them up later, but it makes it easier if you break them up. So now all we've got left to do is to cook up these noodles, get them to the correct consistency, and then what we're going to do is we're going to put everything, sauce and noodles together in a Tupperware and let it sit overnight. Okay, now that everything's done, we're on the final step. Well, not the final step. That's not the, this isn't the final step. This is, this is the final step in the cooking process. So we're gonna add all our sauce and our noodles into a big old Tupperware and we're gonna let it sit in the fridge overnight. Now the reason we do this and we cook the noodles and everything is because this sauce, we're gonna let it soak into the noodles and this, the noodles are gonna get, they're gonna absorb all this sauce and that's gonna make it so that when it dehydrates, um, the moisture, or, um, when you reboil it, all your sauce is going to be in your noodles already. So you just add water. And it just makes it so that the dehydrating, the dehydrating process is really easy. I almost, I could have added another can of sauce to this. See how it's very thick? and it's not super saucy, I actually could have added another sauce or can of sauce. If you're making this on your own, I would recommend adding one more can of sauce, even though this will be delicious and still a great dehydrated spaghetti. I would prefer if it was a little saucier. Okay, so now we are just gonna lid this up, put it in the fridge, let it sit till tomorrow morning, and then we're gonna start dehydrating. What do you guys want some? You thought, you thought this was for you? You silly dogs. You silly dogs. Okay, so our spaghetti's been sitting overnight, about 10 hours, and should be all cooled down, so let's check it out for consistency. Smells good, looks good, but does it feel good? Oh yeah. See, all the sauce is pretty much soaked into the noodles. You can see they're nice and uh, full or they absorb they absorbed all the moisture so it'll dehydrate great it won't fall through the uh, cracks as much on the dehydrator so we're gonna give it one last mix here and then we're gonna put it on our uh, cutting board here we're gonna cut it up into smaller bits and throw it on the dehydrator a big old big old plop of spaghetti on here Good spaghetti, that's good spaghetti right there. Good spaghetti. All right, I like to cut it up into small bits. Okay, it's ready to go on the dehydrator sheets. Okay, so one important thing, when you're putting it on this, these dehydrator sheets and they're ready to go on the dehydrator, do not put it on too thick. I Be warned. I have put it on a little too thick before and what happens is it ends up taking like 20 hours to dehydrate 
and you get this white mold that can form on it and I've only had it happen once or twice when I was trying to just do too much at once and I put it on I pile it up maybe maybe twice as thick as this you kinda wanna just do a thin little layer this is this is already pretty thick as it is like this with noodles laying on top of each other but this will be okay but I've done it to where it was twice as thick as this and it will mold and I just threw it away when I did that I don't know if it's gonna kill you or not but don't put it on too thick so we're just gonna put all our spaghetti onto all our sheets just like this making it so it's not too thick and there's gaps everywhere so the dehydrator that I am using is the it's the Excalibur food dehydrator now I've used many different uh, uh, food dehydrators and they all work well for the most part I think what was is it a Weber what's the <laughs> there's an original one with the trays that go up that I used to use and I've since upgraded to this one those ones with the trays they'll work fine they just have a little bigger gaps and you have to rotate your trays uh, this one it the, the air blows from the side so it's nice and even I really love this dehydrator you can fit it's, it's easier to clean than those trays and you can fit a lot of more stuff I will link uh, a link to purchase this dehydrator down in the description it, it is kind of expensive but if you're going to dehydrate a lot of food I would recommend getting one of these Excaliburs they're really great one other thing I wanted to mention the amount of spaghetti I have here is not um, the amount if you follow my exact recipe that you'll have because Funk and I couldn't help ourselves we had to have some for dinner last night it smelled too good so we had some big old portions of spaghetti and uh, that'll that'll equate to a <laughs> two three or four or less meals in the end all right on the last tray now I could have fit more the last couple trays were super thin there wasn't much on them I could have definitely fit if we didn't eat spaghetti for dinner last night I could have fit the rest on here okay so now it's all spread out ready to go in the dehydrator and start the process so Okay, so we're going to set the heat for about 150 degrees. Uh, you can do it on high or medium high. I'll do it at 155. We'll set it at 155. And I'm going to set the timer for 10 hours. Timer is set for 10 hours at 155 degrees. Or you can do it at high heat because there's meat in it. And now we're going to check it in 10 hours, see where it's at. Okay, so our spaghetti has been sitting for 10 hours. And it just shut off a little while ago. Let's check it out. Okay, it looks pretty good. Let's get a close up here. Okay, it's looking pretty good. You can see it's it's nice and crunchy. All right, yeah, it's pretty crunchy. There's nothing mushy. It's all spread out nice. So this is done. So I just like to take and put all mine back into. It comes right off the, uh, the trays, as you can see, nice and easy. You're going to get little bits here and there. But I put it back in the uh, Tupperware that I had in originally just because uh, when you package it up, you're going to want to break it up a little bit. Kind of take it and just kind of crunch it up so it's smaller. Because when you put it in your bags and stuff, you don't want to poke in. So I'm going to get this all in here. There's the final product. That is some grade A dehydrated spaghetti with beef. So now we're just gonna, I'm just gonna kind of break it up a little bit in the smaller bits and we're gonna get to packaging. Okay, so for what I do for packaging is I, I used to do it a couple different ways. Um, I used to just take a, my, bowl, my bowl, my little Trangia bowl that I actually cook in and we'd kind of just eyeball it and uh, fill the bowl and then we used to actually buy boil-in bags, just like the, the backpacker me backpacker's meals you can buy at the store. And those work great, 
but they create stinky trash and when you're on an extended trip now I just like to just throw it in a Ziploc bag so that I can put the spaghetti cook it up in my bowl and I don't have any stinky trash and I also use a digital food scale to measure my portions so that they're all the exact same so what I do for my portion size is I do six ounces that's a pretty hefty portion size so if you don't like eating a ton of food I wouldn't do six ounces maybe I do five ounces <laughs> I'm not sure what I did on my most recent trip I did five or six ounces we'll see what six ounces looks like but anyways I put get it all in the bowl I make sure to crush it up so that it doesn't poke through because it will poke through your bag when you're throwing it in your backpack. So you want to get all the nice long pieces out. Is the final product now this is ready to be taken out and eaten in the woods all right so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna I'm pretty sure it was six ounces my my portion size so what I'm gonna do right now is uh, portion these all out at six ounces a piece we're gonna see how many meals we got okay so overall I ended up with seven uh, six ounce portions which is I eat more than the average bear when I'm out there so these are pretty hefty portions these are a good size I like six ounces works pretty well for me. Some days I even eat more and put myself in a food coma. But like I said before, we did have two massive bowls of a spaghetti and that was at least four portions. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that I had 11 portions worth of dehydrated spaghetti from this batch. And I spent $30 on um, the food supplies and the Ziploc bag. So I'm gonna go ahead and say it's right around $3 per meal. It tastes delicious and the portion size is a little bit bigger than the ones at the store. So overall, it's a pretty good yield. Um, and if you're wondering how long these can last and that sort of thing, I have no idea, but I will say, when I first made my first batch of dehydrated spaghetti, I did a little test on myself. I stuck one of these, it, it was Ziploc, or it was, it was, uh, it was, uh, it was vacuum sealed, by, mind you, but I stuck it in a sunny window and I left it for a month. I let it sit for a month in the direct sunlight every day in the summertime and I ate it and it was perfectly fine. So I don't know how long they last but I've left them in the freezer for a year and they're still okay but no idea, I can't, I can't give you that but it will last, it should last you when you're going out camping for a week so I wouldn't let them sit around too long, um, not in the freezer but they should be pretty good. Now that our dehydrated spaghetti is all made, the last step is to enjoy it in a nice wilderness setting. So let's show you how to cook it. Right Monty, you want some of this? Now you can cook it like a normal dehydrated meal um, and just pour the water into it, but I prefer to cook it a different way where you boil the water up uh, with it in there. All right, so let's just add in our spaghetti and our water. Now depending on how saucy you like it, um, you can either, if you don't want it very saucy, like really wet and liquidy, I would, that about, that much water above it is pretty good. That's about the perfect amount if you don't like it extra liquidy. Now I like it extra liquidy and soupy kind of when I'm out here, so I'm going to add a little bit more. And that's just personal preference, that's all that is. But we're just going to get this to a boil and you're going to let it cook for about five minutes roughly boiling and kind of stirring it and then you put a lid on it and let it sit for 15 20 minutes however long you feel like waiting the longer you wait the better it gets all right let's give it a stir here boiling it like this just aids in uh, how quick it's ready and you can see it's starting to look, it's, it's really liquidy right now, 
but as it sits it will definitely thicken up and the noodles will rehydrate a lot better we're just going to give this another minute or two and then set it off to the side and let it soak up all that sauce into the noodles it's been boiling like this for a good three minutes so now we're just gonna stir it up again set it off to the side and let it rehydrate for at least 15 to 20 minutes i tend to go longer Mm, oh, that's gonna be good. Okay, this has been sitting for exactly 15 minutes, so let's take a look. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. And see, I added all that extra liquid, and it's still, it's perfect. I even like it a little liquidier than this, but this is pretty perfect, so you have to add that little bit extra. But look at that. That's gonna be so good. Okay, it's time to eat. All that's left to do is enjoy it. Bon appetit. Mm. Perfect. Thank mm -hmm. you.